Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to what I think will be our last live video uh, of the day here at uh, Gettysburg Address 157. And we just thought it would be cool not only to get out of the cold, but also to show off uh, one of our great partners here in town. When we purchased Lee's headquarters, uh, you remember that, you, more than 10,000 of you, helped us to do that. We actually acquired uh, more than 100 artifacts that were part of that museum over at that time. And this, this, this facility, the Horse Soldier in Gettysburg, the, the relic and antique, and antique dealer we've always dealt with and completely trust here in Gettysburg, um, without any promise of payment, held these items, sought out the various parks that might take in these items and whatnot, and, uh, and, uh, and, and it was great at the time. They helped us to take those items and get them into the hands where, where, where they belonged. Look for our old videos on that, um, and, and you'll see a lot of those items are now in the hands of the Gettysburg National Military Park. So we're at the Horse Soldier in Gettysburg. I'm really psyched to be here, and make, it makes your mouth water, and uh, I'm really happy to introduce my old friend, Jim Thomas. We worked together for many years. Stay away Hello. from me, Jim. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Jim's going to sort of take us around, and Chris White behind the camera, Jim and I will just talk about some of the great stuff in the shop. Okay, well, my name's Jim Thomas, and I do work here at the Horse Soldier. Do not expect anywhere near that kind of energy. From Come me. on, Jim! <laughs> and uh, we'll just go around the shop and, and look at a lot of really cool stuff. Um, currency. What's the money? Lots of Confederate Lots currency of here. This is state currency, state currency and national. One interesting thing, and since we got these two back, paper was such a commodity at the time that bills frequent paper would be reused and here you see an example of I don't know what kind of bill is on the front but they took an old piece of paper turned it 90 degrees and reused the other side um, so that's that's pretty cool that is kind of neat good good uh, here got some interesting things here really good condition you don't see Henry rifles very long often um, so that's that's a rarity they were more private purchase for the regiments out west especially the color companies that like to uh, use those to protect their flag. This is where I like to hang out. We've got hard images here, uh, daguerreotypes, ambrotypes, tin types and whatnot. A lot of them cased, you see. The uh, daguerreotypes are easy to spot because they look like mirrors. Postmortem. Um, yeah, and of course, postmortem stuff, very common at the time. We've got our stereo views up top of something that I like a lot, Libby Prison, and of course, lots of cartes de visite uh, that you see the most common, if, in my opinion, produced photo of the Civil War. But man, we're only in one corner of the shop. There's more images behind me, but we'll keep moving here. You're with the American Battlefield Trust. We're at the Horse Soldier in Gettysburg checking out, it looks like the gun room. This is one of the gun rooms. Um, a mixture of guns here, specifically carbines. Um, carbines during the war, inventors went crazy and um, invented all sorts of mechanisms to fire their ammunition, made proprietary ammunition so that the government bought their gun. They needed to buy the ammunition from them or buy the rights to make the ammunition at the arsenals. And as you can see, just lots and lots of guns. 42s, we got some bayonets down below. <laughs> Somebody already noted, what a dummy. I hope they were talking about the mannequin that was next to me. And what I'll also <laughs> say is, uh, somebody said the Henry Rifles at Gettysburg. Yes, it is. Here at the Horse Soldier, the Henry Rifle but is not, at Gettysburg. But they were not used. <laughs> they not used, the but not used during the battle. So, um, again, here we have the typical Springfield rifle of the period. This is the Model 61 bolster. Um, this is a significant feature for that. In the 63, oh, I can't find one. Um, you have the flat bolster with an eagle on it, which again, we picked a bad example real quick. But so That's live TV for you here. I remember, Jim, while we were walking through, there's a lot of swords here. We're not even in the sword room, but um, I think there was a particular ID sword here. This sword, unfortunately, the guy didn't have a great history, but it is engraved, and it specifically says J.C. Malloy, 63rd Regiment, Irish Brigade. But everyone likes the Irish Brigade. Unfortunately, this guy didn't serve very long and get in action. But it's still a nice presentation-grade sword. And then we... <laughs> so lots of it. bayonets down there, and then, oh man, lots more, more in here. Bayonets. Swords, bayonets, everything you'd want. Some fancier swords in here. These are more presentation grade. They're not the kind of sword some officer would carry in the field, but um, they were presented to everybody. And as you can see, there's lots of swords to be had. Uh, Vern Johnson says, I better start saving up for the next trip. Trust me, I feel your pain. I used to live right down the street from this place. Um, and it used to be in a slightly different location, but you guys have been here for a long time. The Horse Soldiers open select hours um, and by appointment only right now. And keep in mind, here we are inside, all masked up. Pennsylvania is getting uh, even more strict tonight. So before you travel to Gettysburg, make sure you check the regulations. 
There's a rack. You won't see this many in one place. This is a Richmond rifle musket wow. with, with a hump back. And that is a feature because they took the machinery from Harper's Ferry, where they made the Maynard tape primer. And that's a residual of that, the template for cutting the lock plate. It has that hump in it because that's where the Maynard tape mechanism would go. And they just had to work with that. I'm guessing on the dates, but I seem to recall about April 18th, the U.S. fired the, uh, the arsenal at Harper's Ferry in 1861. And by the 21st, Stonewall Jackson showed up. The Union had dumped some of the gun-making equipment into the Potomac River. The Confederates fished it out, and it served them well throughout the rest of the war. Some earlier flintlocks, nothing um, revolutionary war here, but 1808 and about that time period for some flintlock. Yeah, now we're, and now we're getting to some of the places that the horse soldier has put out just for us, which is kind of cool. But in the meantime, all sorts of stuff. We can't possibly cover this whole place. Um, but you'll have to come here in person or look at their catalog online. What is it, horsesoldier.com? Yes, it is. Real quick, I showed this to uh, Chris oh, yeah. and Gary earlier. Many of you have seen and held a cartridge box like this. It's a typical um, federal cartridge box, but we'll hand it to Gary real yeah. quick. And Seriously, I mean, it is heavy. You know why, Jim? Yes, I do. It is full almost. It's about three quarters full. These are the loose cartridges. There Look are some that. cleaners and things. In the bottom of the tins, there are two full wrap packs still. And if you've never held a full cartridge box, you can't appreciate the weight these guys were carrying around with them. And you see why uh, archaeologists and relic hunters alone, alike will tell you drop to bullets are one of the most common things you find because it's something that was heavy that you could get rid of. Now, Jim, what are some of those cleaner bullets called? It's McWilliams, right? Yellow, absolutely. I think they're called Williams bullets. Thank you, Justin, for that. It would clean out the barrel as it went through, right? Yes, it did. Um, strangely, the Elijah Williams who patented it never made claim to that. Um, but the government found that it did scrape some of the fouling out of the barrel um, during the trials, and they started packing them one per pack of 10 early in the war, then three, they went to six per 10. We're going to replace the regulation mini ball with it entirely. Did trials one more time, found they failed miserably in the trial, and they ordered all the millions of rounds in stock at the arsenals to be um, broken up to reclaim the lead and the powder. <laughs> Very cool. So we're making it down to the, the back of the shop here, but it's in a couple of wings, so we're not remotely covering everything. And man, I'm seeing uh, you know, core insignia and letter stencils and, uh, and belt buckles and whatnot, uh, US, uh, state of New York, breastplates, cool glasses. I still want a pair of these. I want to get my current really blind prescription into one of these. I think it's impossible at this point. Now, this is really cool, Jim. Okay, here, we've all seen the movie Gettysburg, I assume, and don't call me Lawrence. Um, Tom Chamberlain's. These are his major of shoulder straps wow. when he was promoted. They're, so they're that, just in beautiful shape. They are in beautiful shape. Um, and, and I think that um, Chris is going to uh, pull up a photo of Tom Chamberlain um, actually wearing. Is, is he? Um, <laughs> supposedly. I think it is Tom Chamberlain, and I think he's actually wearing them. Something about shoulder boards that I just really like. And here is his commission to the rank of major. Very, and very cool. Who's it signed by, Gary? Uh, looks like I saw Edwin Stanton right there. And is he the only one? Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson. Wow. Yeah, there's the name. That's I don't know if you can focus, if you're getting any glare on this, because it is mounted between two pieces yeah. of plexiglass. But um, there's Tom Chamberlain's. Someone's commission. wondering if you have a Hall rifle. I don't even know the Hall rifle. We don't have to go back I there. I had one. I think I just sold one. <laughs> we just sold it. Maybe it was to you, man. Maybe you just wanted to say that you did it. So people are asking all, all sorts of other questions. For those of you just joining us, I see we have a lot of people on right now. Um, you're with the American Battlefield Trust, and we are at the Horse Soldier um, in Gettysburg checking out just some um, of their collections. It looks like Jim's going to... Let's, let's go round about. There you go. <clears throat> These are some higher-end presentation swords. This is Franklin Pierce's Militia Sword, and it comes with a couple of tickets from speaking engagements. He, Kind of, I think he uh, died a pauper almost because he didn't make any money. The rest of these are just either swords in really fine condition. You can see the etching and engraving on that blade to the inlays, the mother of pearl inlays um, there and over here. They're just specialty things. Like I said, obviously not field grade swords. They were pre presentation swords um, as thanks and 
I, I, I'll, I'll say that somebody, first of all, Robert Carlson is watching. I'll bet you've shopped here before. I know what you collect, man. And I see uh, George said, uh, give the people what you want. Show us the Gettysburg shelf. Okay, um, well, and I also is. see a few other people. And Stuart Sanders is watching. Good to see you, man. Um, we were with you, of course, so much in Kentucky recently. We saw you at Mill Springs in Perryville. Great to see you. And it was great to have the Colonel, Colonel Sanders, Kentucky Colonel, Colonel Sanders, Sanders. Um, with us here. So we're moving around the horse soldier. We've got more to see. Lots more. Some large... 100 pound artillery shells that are, we can only put so many in one spot because the floor sags. <laughs> well, I believe it. Here's some mixed everything from Philippine insurrection, World War I, World War II. It's kind of a catch all because we're not necessarily known for that. You can see lots of World War I German helmets around the top of the bookshelf. Somebody asked, is this stuff that we're showing all for sale? I think I know yes, the answer. I do too. Yes, it is. <laughs> so yes, it's for sale. Somebody's asking if you have Chamberlain shoulder boards. I don't think you have those, No, right? we do not. And things like that don't last. You know, you guys have. I've over the years seen so much come through the horse soldier. We had Reynolds uh, stuff. Over the, yeah, they had like Reynolds stuff. I got to see some of that. Uh, so um, he was riding when he was shot. Yep. Unbelievable. <laughs> Um, so it's good These to see are, you all. I see a lot of you, 350 of you watching live right now, and they're talking about the Horse Soldiers movie, which you have to talk about, of course. <laughs> good. What do you got? Actually, I'm not for, as familiar with that. I have to break Andy in here for that. For oh, some, man. Uh, I, the John horse. Wayne movie? It's great. Yeah. Um, God, these were artillery fuses right here, and yeah. some of these are Borman this fuses, is. and others here some epaulets. You see those in pictures a lot on the shoulders of some of the highfalutin people. You have a lot of artillery shells at the bottom there. Good, good. And, oh, check it out. Look at all. When you're done there, Chris, if you'll go up, look at the core. There's that metal core badges, right? Yeah, six core for the most part. There's some others some there. Some second, a little 11th over there. Third. Some fourth tongue buckles. Here's a nice 91st. Pennsylvania. Uh, so, yeah, we got all sorts of Good. Ones. Hey, do you want to show off this stove here, man? Okay, we can, we can do that if it will. Um, I forget the guy's name already. Um, but, you know, what you see George is... George Arnold. George Arnold, so he's a big Gettysburg right guy, here, right? here you can see the cast into the top of the stove, George Arnold, Gettysburg. He's got a store right in the town square, as far and, as I remember. And he made stoves. Here, let me get this out so you don't get glare. And Josephine Miller from the Miller Farm out in the, in the middle of Pickett's Assault. Um, she made bread during the battle, and this picture, I think, is from a reunion, one of the... Correct. The soldiers were so happy that Josephine Miller did this at the Rogers house. She came out to the site of the Rogers house and actually brought, they brought the old oven out and took a picture with now, her. Now, this isn't hers. We're not saying that. Yes, but yes. it is the same foundry, same exact style. If you get to, you can see the legs and the pattern. Very and cool. And the name cast in. It's, it's exactly the same kind of stove oh, from man. the same source. I'm getting too many comments. People that love the horse soldiers. Someone's from Vegas right now. These are and Rogers statues, these were from a different period, but these were popular. They're plaster statues that Rogers was a famous sculptor. And we have Columbus up there. We have Civil War themed things, but he made many, many versions of statues. Uh, good. So an amazing so, collection. Uh, looking for rosaries. Somebody can't believe they haven't been here before. Cool stuff. You should come. I can't believe you haven't been here either. <laughs> All right. Um, what do we have guys, up here? You guys like these sketches, so I don't yeah. know what you want to... So, so this is an artist <clears throat> by Richard Holland. He's with the Ninth Mass Battery. You see, it's not a battery that... Uh, this is the famous Bigelow Battery. There's a lot of sketches. You might be able to catch John Burns' house right below the camera. Uh, I think I'm looking... I can't quite tell what that house is, but I recognize it in the back there. But Good original... Gettysburg sketches there. These are Virginia sketches. There's the Capitol building right there. Very cool. Let's see how wooded Washington, D.C. was at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Okay, and it looks like we have a, a probably a 1930s or 19, a 13. World War One era. 13. Yes, re reunion at Gettysburg. Nice big panoramic. So that's the 50th anniversary. These are the tents they with call all the, the veterans. The Great Camp, and somewhere in the middle is the Great Tent where Woodrow Wilson spoke. Mm, I, that's down this end, but I don't see it in this image but Very right behind cool. you we have some more uniforms um some groupings um let me say that uh subject to our because i see our friend tom nank is here here's our, he's our kind of our local guy in gettysburg he opens up lee's headquarters when he is able and covid uh regulations allowing because they are getting stricter tonight uh, we're planning on being open at lee's headquarters for just a person or two at a time um uh, i believe tomorrow from 10 to 3 or saturday from 10 to 3 go check out tom and get inside lee's headquarters possibly for the last time this year we open it as much as we can it's tough in covid time general zook's a pair of general zook's boots wow with the old, one of the old, unfortunately, silverfish eaten tags. 
Um, um, and we don't know if these are the ones you wore at Gettysburg. They right? claim, but I've heard of another pair, you know, but they came from his estate and whatever. This is a Confederate general officer. Look at that. Wow. And uh, Chris, you know who this is, right? Yeah, it's Martin Luther Smith. He goes on to become the chief topographical engineer for Lee's Army, um, especially during the North Anna, Spotsylvania, Overland campaign. Yeah. So we are closer to the front, so you see more Gettysburg stuff up near the front as well you should. Here, for those of you who know the name John Batchelder, here's an actual painting by John Batchelder. He was here a lot. He had the time of the Springs Hotel, which sprung up, ha ha ha, uh, <laughs> west of Willoughby's Run on the first day's battlefield. Very popular place for many years and where your, your ills could be cured by the medicinal waters of the Catalysine Springs. I like these over here. Whatever if you like buttons. I mean, these are buttons of every type from most of the states um, of the Confederacy and most of the states of the Union. Um, just incredible stuff, and they're, they're, they're organized this way. Hang on to your pocketbook when you come here. <laughs> or don't. Yeah, or don't. Of course, I'm sure they want the reverse. We're at the Horse Soldier at Gettysburg. You're with the American Battlefield Trust on our last live video of the day. We mentioned the Williams bullet and that they were ordered to be broken up so they could salvage the lead and the powder. Instead of melting them down to make round shot for the cannonballs, they just put them in cannonballs. <laughs> so, so this would be like a 1864 or later manufactured shell, and they just filled them with the old, instead of messing with them, they just got rid of them. A few questions people are asking, what's the insurance like on this place? I'm not even going to address that. Uh, where does all your stuff come from? I imagine you have as many sellers as you do buyers. Yeah. Um, They've been in business, Sam and West Small have been in business. Their folks started this in 1971. They actually grew up in a house directly across Emmitsburg Road from the Sherfee farm. So they grew up on the battlefield. Um, the, ha the business has been here since then. Um, they are so well known, basically stuff finds them. <laughs> cool. And, and what I would say, too, is one of the things I like about the, the good relic dealers, and there are, there are other antique dealers in Gettysburg, to be sure, and what I like about all the good ones is that, you know, in the case of those Zook boots, I mean, it would be worth a lot more money if you could say for sure that he was wearing those here. But, but no, if you're uncertain about it, you have to tell the truth about it. Lastly, somebody asked about uh, this sweatshirt. The Trust has really upped its swag game. We have all sorts of stuff on our shop, and I think it's battlefields.org slash shop or shop slash battlefields.org. I always forget which one it is. Chris might be putting it up there now. So check this things out. They might hit you on the shipping, but I think it's worth it. Whoa, check it out. <laughs> That's an, this is an early souvenir. Um, was it wood or good? One of the guys, the, of course, Sam and Wes know. I'm just... Sam and West, this has been owned by the small family for many years, and Sam and West know this um, stuff. One particular guy in the 1880s and 90s engraved shell fragments and things like this, making souvenirs for the veterans themselves. So good, you good. can see that. And we are, maybe we'll walk down here one more time, but uh, we're, we're, we're getting up toward the end. Somebody else was asking again, what's the name of that website? HorseSoldier.com. HorseSoldier.com. Again, we're not pushing this for any reason. We don't get anything out of it other than that they've been a very good partner to us. They helped us when we needed it, and uh, we have always done honorable deals together, at least as far as we know. Jeff Davis down there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you got Jefferson Davis here, an 1858 signature, um, which is really cool stuff. Oh, getting some glare there. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And then we already saw some of this. Jim, anything notable on this stretch? Well, this case here is almost all, is all Confederate items. Some of it's bled over here because you just have so much. That's a Bowie knife to remember, I think. Some Confederate copies of the Federal 1832 short sword, artillery sword. Um, and then again, just more insignia. And I'm more seeing sword. more Gettysburg stuff over here and some stereo views. That always makes me happy. I see the some of the old cabinet cards of Gettysburg. Oh, who's that guy? Yeah, Dan Sickles. There are Sickles is what I meant to say. Luther Minning, these early tour books of battlefields, not just Gettysburg and Antietam, but many others as well, are really interesting ways to understand the battlefield in 1890 or 1910 and what kind of guide stories they were telling, what we call old guide stories, the kinds that we don't really repeat except to have fun with them. A lot of those are in these books and they're really worth getting it. Look at this. Round Top Restaurant. You don't see this much. This is along the Wheatfield Road and what we now call Sykes and Sedgwick Avenues. Um, and you can really 
You can just barely see the sign for Round Top Restaurant. There was a park here called Round Top right. Park. Yep, he's um, fighting the glare. Yeah, yeah, and there was a whole thing called Sedgwick. A town sprouted up around Round Top Park because there was a roller rink. There was a post office. There were two restaurants. There was places to gamble. There were uh, maybe a house of ill repute. I don't want to say for sure. Was but there a trough? <laughs> there, was, there was a trough and everything like that, at least at Tipton Park and I think elsewhere. So I think we're about to wrap, thing, wrap things up here. Uh, Jim, anything else right in this corner here? Uh, oh, we've got our old bottles, man. Bottles, if you like old bottles, soda, soda water bottles, the uh, onion bottles, some of the early pottery. Okay, well, I think I think we, you know, I think everybody on here wants to see a whole lot more. Uh, a lot of people are happy what we've done all day today. We'd like that, you know. These are tough times right now, and uh, if you all enjoy, sorry, y'all enjoy <laughs> us going out to all these places, um, that that's uh, you know reward enough. You all pay, you know, our supporters and members pay Chris White and I to come to these places to see our partners, to check out cool artifacts, so we can bring these battles and battlefields and historic sites and local shops to you as well. So I want to thank Jim for taking us through the shop. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for being here and thanks to see you all coming through or on our website remember go to the website and that'll also have the hours um it's, it's by appointment only is it uh, uh what are the hours again right now with appointments uh around 10 to 4 um and you don't have to make appointment long in advance just we're just trying to keep the quantity of people in the store down to less than 10. Oh, Luis wants to see more, but I think we're done here so you're gonna have to re-watch the video and that's the one to see more. The one bad thing I'll have to point out is the website's the best place to find stuff and get a hold of us, but probably only 30% of what you've seen is on there because we <laughs> just can't keep up with it all. They're up to their eyeballs yeah. with work, literally. <laughs> so, Jim, thank you. Thank you to the small family and all the staff here at the Horse Soldier. Thank you all for watching and, of course, for supporting Battlefield Preservation.